Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here in part 5 of our series on the power of prayer coming out of chapter 17 of the 3rd Testament of the Bible which is called the New Way of Worshiping God. You can find a link to the 3rd Testament of the Bible in the description of this video both an audio version and a PDF that you could download to your device and check out chapter 17. And if you haven't done so already, go in and check out the other parts to this series that we've done already. In this part, we're going to look at verses 134 and 135, talking about the power of prayer. But before I go any further, I want to just say, I do recognize that I am talking to two different types of people out there. Two different people with two different goals as the theme of our message is the repairs of the breach. We are repairing the paths to dwell in. And so the message from Hermes Academy reaches a bunch of people, some of which are waiting for the great escape. These are people who plan to be off the planet before any of the tribulation gets started. Then there are others who plan to live through the tribulation and inherit the earth. It is not my responsibility to separate the tares from the wheat. That's why I try to keep my messages universal. But in either case, whether you're planning to fly away, or if you're hunkering down for the troubles that are on the way, you've got to learn how to pray. Those that will be here going through the tribulation, we understand that your prayers are going to be your number one defense and offense to help you make it through it. But even those that will be gone away will still have to be able to communicate with the Father. They will still have to know how to pray. And while those who are still on earth are praying for the tribulations and troubles that they will see firsthand and be going through, they will also rely on the prayers of those who will have escaped by then. In other words, we would hope that those individuals would be praying for us. But let's go on. 134 says, Truly I tell you that if you were already united in spirit, fault and intention, your prayer would be enough to stop the nations that now prepare the hour to throw themselves at each other. It's not hard to see what he's talking about if you turn on the news. We're on the verge of World War III. Russia, China, these countries are preparing to go to war. In America, we're in a war. That what we're seeing on television right now with the peaceful protests and the non-peaceful protests and the riots, that is the first stages of war here in America. These people are throwing themselves at each other. This is an American war right now. It seems as though they're about to send in the U.S. military. Nobody seems to be able to help the situation. Our political leaders can't help. Our religious leaders don't know what to say. And the police definitely can't make things better. And then you think there are innocent bystanders down there. There are even children involved in those protests but yet it seems to be out of control. But look what it's telling us right here. He says, if you are already united in spirit, thought and intention, your prayer will be enough to stop the nations that now prepare to throw themselves at each other. If we understood how to pray, if we understood the power of prayer, we could stop these wars from going on. Too bad that the majority of people will only find the need to learn how to pray after the wars have started. When they start to see bombs falling, people dying, will they start to take prayer seriously? It goes on to say, you would destroy the hatreds and would be an obstacle to all the evil projects of your brothers. See, we have this ability now. We can stop these wars. We can talk the war machine. But can one man do it? Can two men do it? We need more people involved in prayer. We need more people 
knowing first of all how to pray and when to pray and what to pray for. Once a year they'll have a national day of prayer. How about first teach the people how to pray and then focus the prayer on stopping some of these wars. According to the way I understand this verse, we could actually stop these wars. Be an obstacle to all the evil projects of our brothers. We could stop the war machine. It goes on to say, you would be like an invisible sword to vanquish the strong and a shield to defend the weak. While others are down there with their protest signs, bullhorns, doing marches, being quite ill-effective, no doubt, we could actually be effective through prayer, through the power of thoughts. An invisible sword to vanquish the strong and a shield to defend the weak. This is what our prayer means to the world. Without our prayers, humanity will be lost. Our prayers is what will save humanity. This is the power of prayer. This is why it's so important to understand how to pray. So check our channel on many classes we've done on how to pray, including the first parts of this series. 135 says, Humanity, confronting these trials, revealing the existence of a higher power, will pause for an instant to meditate. And like we said a few minutes ago, they're only going to understand the power of prayer when the war starts. They're only going to take spirituality seriously when they are in danger and about to die. The stock value of this higher power is going to go through the roof when these nuclear bombs start falling out of the sky. When they start to see violence in their own communities and neighborhoods. Or when their own people are in trouble and are getting harmed and hurt. As long as it's just on CNN and Fox, it's really only just entertainment. That when they get tired of it, they can switch the channel. But when they start to hear the percussion grenades and start to smell the tear gas, then things will start to get more serious for them. It is only then will they pause for an instant to meditate, contemplate the idea that we have a father and a creator. And that meditation will spare them from many of the heavy touches and trials that they are to receive at the hand of nature and the elements. They are going to start praying. When things get really bad, people are going to start communing with the Father spirit to spirit. And is it going to be too late for them? No, it's actually going to work. Like it says here, it will spare them from many of the heavy touches and trials that they are to receive. So even though we'll wait until after the war has started or after the elements have been unleashed to start to pray, once we do start to pray, we will bring a halt to many of the other elements that would otherwise extinguish our flames. Police brutality, riots, violent protests and other uprisings and things that's going on in the world let's start to pray for these individuals let's just not look at it as entertainment but let's look at it as an opportunity to help these people by way of our prayer our heavenly father hallowed be thy name father abba we come to you today lord asking that you would look down on the situations around the world syria hong kong the United States and the other places that are suffering violence these days, Lord. And we ask you to please curb some of this violence. We understand that it is your will that is to be done. But we ask you to look down on those innocent victims. Those people that need your help. Those people who are being harmed and shouldn't be harmed in these situations, Lord. We ask you to protect them. 
For those that are staring up the trouble, Lord, we ask you to give them a heart that wants to curb the violence. We ask you to change their mind and make them not want to be so violent and so destructive. And for the leaders that are out there, Lord, we ask you to help them to understand what it is that they're supposed to say and make proper decisions that will help curb some of this violence. We ask you to give the police a mind to protect and serve the citizens of this country. And as far as our president, Father, we ask that the decisions that he makes and the words that he says results only in peace, Lord. These, among other blessings, we ask in your son's name we pray. Amen. And so be it. Like we said, this is part five of this series on the power of prayer. We've been wanting to keep these videos short, so we've been focusing on one lesson at a time. Go ahead and check out those other videos if you haven't done so already. And hit the subscribe button so you can see when the new videos come out on the power of prayer. We have one more to go in this series. Hit the like button if you've gotten something out of this video. Hit the dislike button if you didn't. May our Father bless you and keep you. And our Father make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Our Father lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.